unfortunately and sadly, they really want to see her get Donald Trump. And I think that's why she was reelected. I'm going to be doing a special video on her opponent. You know, recently she secured the Democratic nomination uh, for re-election. Of course, that's no surprise, at least not a surprise for me. And I forgot the lady's name, but I have reached out to her to see if I can get an interview with her. I believe she's an attorney. She's a white lady from the Alpharetta area, North Fulton County, which, as you probably do know, is a wealthier area, Roswell, Alpharetta, maybe some of the Buckhead area. It's kind of divided there. And then there's a lot, let's just call it what it is, a lot of white voters in South Fulton County. But again, you do have a lot of a lot of black voters, a lot of black Democratic voters in Fulton County. Do you think there's any chance this coming November that a Republican candidate could dethrone Fannie Willis, kick her out of office? Or do you think that's a pipe dream? Nothing's a pipe dream. Uh, You know what I thought about, as you mentioned in this, when they had the last election and I think the lady lady's name was Mary Norwood. You may have to look her up, but she ran for mayor. She may have been a Republican mayor and. She was a businesswoman and she she may have been from the Buckhead area and she lost, I think, to Keisha Bottoms. Uh, so I, it'll probably be kind of the same results, probably not even as close as, as that election. Unfortunately, I, I think that uh, I think you're right. I hope that's not the way it turns out. I hope by some miracle there's a, enough Republican voters turn out to throw her out of office to be quite blunt about it. But personally, I don't think DA Fannie Willis's problems are over. I know one of my friends today sent me a video link or something, and apparently the uh, the Court of Appeals there in Georgia, they are now going to hear the case, but it's not going to be until right before the election. So there's no chance that anything is going to move on this case, at least before the election, one way or the other. And at least as far as I'm concerned, that gives me a large sense of joy. And uh, my question is, is that how you see it too? Do you, I mean, it's pretty well locked up or do you have a different take on it? Yeah, I think it's pretty well locked up. Uh, you remember the case with the, the ladies in the uh, the election thing? You know, not much came of that either. I think. All right, go go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, I think they'll kind of sweep it on the rug. Uh, okay, great. Yeah. I want to pivot real quick. Let's just take a look at some of our comments we have coming in here real quick see if we get any questions zach it's always good to see you in the office my friend john jr and everyone else hello and of course we got rose marie in the house again rose it's always a pleasure to have you i always joke about rose uh in the program this is my girlfriend so she's always tuning in so <laughs> i just always give her a shout out right there and pennsylvania paul as usual crazy stuff yes sir it is hello everyone zach P.A. Paul from Southwest Pennsylvania. Always glad to have you in the house. And hello to Rosemary. Okay, great. Now, we're going to pivot. The news of the day, at least as far as I'm concerned, I think the big story of the day is, as many of you probably know, President Joe Biden is over in France for the Normandy, uh, I'm sorry, D-Day celebrations in Normandy, France, if I can get the word out correctly. As of tomorrow, it's been 80 years since World War II when the Allies all came together and they invaded France to free Europe. I mean, what a great day. It was quite emotional. I saw some reports on television this morning of some of these men that were actually fighting in this particular war. They're like 99, 100 plus years old. I believe there's only 1% of the men, they were all men at that time, that stormed that beach one way or the other that are still alive today. And as I said, they have to be 98, 99, 100 plus years old. So all expectations are this is probably the final time we're going to have a celebration in France to commemorate D-Day with an actual living survivor. That's just statistically probably what we're looking at. But what I want to talk about is the news. There's, there's been an article that has came out in the Wall Street Journal today. And this article was trying to be fair, in my opinion, pertaining to President Joe Biden. But they talked to almost 50 individuals, 50 independent people that generally have a close association with President Biden. And they describe him just like the Her report describes Joe Biden as a person that is in decline. That was their words, not my words. A a person that is rapidly deteriorating and his signs of age are only increasing and expediting at best. And my my, my question for you, John, before we're going to look at a video here, my, my question for you is just real simple. 
Do you see it that way? And what do you think other black Americans see at the same time? In terms of Joe Biden's health? Yeah, as far as him being in cognitive decline, do you, do you think other people see it like that way, especially uh, black Americans or just people in general that you know? And if they see it that way, do you think they care? You know, I, I noticed it early on, probably before he was elected. Um, I, I've talked to people about it, and I, I think a lot of them brush it off. I, I think the biggest issue is that the news covers it up. If they were, there was, there was more talk about Trump in the 25th Amendment than there has ever been about Joe Biden. So I, I think it's just been covered up to most people. I, I, th I think, I think, unfortunately, you're, you're probably right. They, most of the legacy news media, they won't even talk about it. They won't even bring it up. They just sweep it under the rug. I, th I think you're absolutely right. I, I believe the only news stations I see even touching the subject is, of course, Fox News. You have Sky News in Australia, which is kind of like a Fox News for Australia. Mm -hmm. And then it's either Newsmax or News Nation. I think it's Newsmax. One of them is more liberal, let's just say more like a CNN, and the other one's a little bit more conservative, not exactly completely conservative like Fox News. But you're right. It's it's the exception and the rule that they're talking about this. But I, I just for the life of me don't understand why people continue to sweep this under the rug. I, I'm going to make a series of videos about this because I think this is very important to get out there. And my, my question is, is a vote for Joe Biden not a de facto vote for President Kamala Harris? What do you think? Oh, that's a good question. That's a good question. I think the first vote um, was a vote for Kamala Harris, considering his age and health. And I think that the people that voted for him the first time had to be OK with her possibly being the president, considering that if he were to be elected the second time, he more than likely would be, you know, yield to her. So I, I think <laughs> she's in better physical condition than him, cognitive condition than him.